Human cultures around the world have been interacting with a variety of substances throughout their histories. One such substance is alcohol. Today we think of going to a bar or casually enjoying a beer. However, the roots of drinking culture stretch back for thousands of years. In this podcast, we will observe an ancient Greek artifact, a drinking vessel known as a crater. Exploring the David Osley Museum of Art for this project, I came across the ancient Greek section of the museum in the first room of the annex to the right of the lobby. I was immediately interested in the size of the artifact, and I knew that it grabbed my attention. The artifact in question is a Greek crater. It's like what we would call in English a jug. The Greek had many names for their containers. In this case, the crater is a wide-mouthed jug-like vessel for storing wine. As mentioned on the plaque underneath the object itself, is it is dated approximately 480 BCE. It is titled as Attic Red-Figured Column Crater, made in the classical period of Greece in the city of Athens. This vessel has no specific creator. However, it is mentioned that the school of Mycenae was involved. Unfortunately, no further information of this school itself could be found in my research. It makes sense that a school would be behind this crater's creation, as the craftsmanship would seem to have been learned. This vessel itself is rather large. In my notes, I approximate that the jug is about two feet tall. The mouth of the crater is about one foot in diameter. If you were to make your arms into a tight circle, that is about how wide it is from rim to rim. The crater is earthenware. It is made of clay. It is a rich reddish brown with black designs and patterns on its earthy surface. There are figures on the vase like jug, outlined in black while their bodies and clothes are red with the clay underneath. On the hip of the crater are two short handles that go from said hip, the bulge of the jug, to the lip. The crater itself has a small circular base or stand, and the lip has a ridge. The crater is surprisingly smooth and glossy at certain angles despite being made of clay. One might expect hard clay to be rough like that of a brick, but this vessel is rather smooth. Finally, the last thing that I can note is that the inside has distinct brush marks of black on the inside. That leads me to believe that the vessel was painted with the black substance with presumably stenciling done on the finer details such as the figures on it. Now, who are these figures on the crater? Firstly, we see Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and fertility. He is cloaked in a toga, and he is holding a plant branch with a horn of some kind. If the dabs of gray are to be believed, Dionysus may be holding a branch of a grapevine. The horn is a drinking cup named Riton. Again, there are many vessels that the Greeks used. Accompanying Dionysus on his side of the jug are two males, nude Silene. The Silene are bearded humans with equine tails and ears. On the opposite side are two dancers, also male and nude, with a long cloth draped over their shoulders. They are in dancing positions with their legs, arms, and heads posed. Dionysus, as mentioned, is the god of wine and fertility. The Silene are spirits that accompany him. Dionysus is also the patron of dancing and theater, which is why the male dancers are on the reverse. All this theming is related to the function of this crater as a container of wine. I mentioned how large the mouth of this vessel because this crater was used to share alcohol. The opening is wide enough for a ladle to scoop out the serve drinks as mentioned on the plaque. This vessel could contain wine that has been mixed with water. As Ian Gately writes in his book, Drink, A Cultural History of Alcohol, the ancient Greeks did not consume their wine straight. They diluted it with water because they believed drinking it unmixed was uncivilized which is a common attitude in ancient Greek opinions of themselves. However, they also believed that unmixed wine was dangerous, being a source of distraction and recklessness. With this analysis, I would conclude that the Greeks enjoyed the effects of alcohol, but they understood that strong wines would cause the severe symptoms to occur faster. If we know that this artifact was used for drinking, that leads to the question of who drank from it. Thankfully, we have some clues. As an article from the Metropolitan Museum of Art describes, drinking in ancient Greece was exemplified in the aristocratic activities of symposium. The symposium was a high-class, all-male activity filled with drinking, discussions, and lounging. The serving would have been done by slave boys or the household. The museum info card also alludes to Dionysus and the crater, correlates with Ian Great Greatley's book. Thus, the secondary source helps articulate that this artifact would have been used primarily by wealthy men. 
It makes sense, then, that the creator of this artifact, according to Doma info card, was an artisan. It would have taken a skilled potter to make something of high enough quality for aristocrats, or rich men, to enjoy. From all the above context and secondary sources, I would conclude that this artifact is a way to show substance, culture, and leisure activities for ancient Greek aristocratic men. The ancient Greeks prized their wine, and the symbolism of the god of wine himself, Dionysus, on the vessel that one would be served the intoxicating substance shows that the ancient Greeks have connections to their deities and included symbolism to their related spheres. For myself, this seemingly obvious connection delves deeper. From the first lectures and artifacts, such as the Old Duvet stone tool, historical narratives are an experience of human empathy for our ancestors. Just as we today say that we dance better when we are drunk, the Greeks may have made this connection with the inclusion of dancers on the crater. The Greek god of wine, Dionysus, is again the patron of dance and theater. It also helps articulate the perceptions that ancient Greeks had of the gods and their representations in festivities and leisure, that deities can be respected in their associated objects. This crater shows us glimpses into one of the most common psychoactive substances known and used by humans, alcohol, which has been around for thousands of years and is used and abused today. Finally, we can see glimpses into who the Greeks thought of as worthy to use such a drinking custom of ladling wine, wealthy men who had the privilege to converse in symposiums and be served by their slaves. Although this vessel does not tell us about all Greeks and all drinking customs, it does offer us the ability to see a window into how the Greeks articulated their leisure time, their drinking habits, their symbolism of gods and spirits related to alcohol, and how this alcohol was enjoyed. That is the connection that historians mean by human or historical empathy. It is the ability to see our connections to the, our past, even in something as simply enjoyed today as pouring a cold one.